Now in Matthew chapter 7 here, we're going to start off, I know we just read this last week about prayer, but we're going to focus this time on the very first section of the chapter. And this is something that is very common that you're going to hear today. Look at verse number 1. It says, Judge not that ye be not judged. Right? And this is a verse that you're going to hear thrown out by people a lot, saying, Judge not, judge not, judge not, judge not. You're not supposed to judge, you're not supposed to judge. It's very pervasive today, and this is, why, this is one of the reasons why I preach on it, because we're going to see exactly what does the Bible say about judging. When should we judge? When should we not judge? Because it says both. It tells us when, you know, it tells us not to judge, but it also tells us to judge. And we're going to look at those scriptures. See, the first thing I just want to mention, and, and we, you know, we, with every doctrine, with everything in the Bible, you got to be careful of people who just come and just want to just, just throw one verse out at their, out there. And that's it. And, and you know, we, all, we always have to read. And, you know, this is one of the reasons why we read the entire chapter before I start preaching. Because I want you to see the context of where we're going from the beginning. And obviously there's more context that's involved. I mean, and that's why I encourage everybody to read the Bible on your own. Read the Bible every day. Read it on your own. So when you do come to church and you hear things, you can think back and say, is this lining up? with what I already read. Does this line up with, with, you know, with the context of the Bible? Does this sound right? And um, that's, the, that's, that's a little bit later in my sermon, but that's the first judging that everyone needs to be doing is judging whether the things that are coming out of the preacher's mouth are correct. Is it true? Is it right? And what a lot of people like to do is they'll just tell you that like, it's never okay to judge. And, and most oftentimes the people that will say that it's because you're saying something about a sin or a wickedness that they either like or they're doing themselves and that they don't want to hear anything negative about it. Those are the first ones you're just going to say, like, you know, if someone's a drunk, right? And you, tell them, and you just try to tell them maybe even kindly and nice and you say, hey, you know, the Bible says that you, know, you shouldn't even be drinking alcohol at all. And, and you're, you're, obviously you're trying to help them, right? You're trying to show them that. And they're just like, oh, don't judge. You can't judge me. It's like, well... That's not exactly what this verse is talking about. We're gonna read. We're gonna get this verse in context. We're gonna see exactly what he's saying here, because because what people like to say is just say, "Judge not that you be not judged," and that's it. And, and you, they usually don't even add that that you be not judged. They'll say, "Judge not," the first two words, and just say, "Judge not, judge not." Well, let's see what this is actually teaching. Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured again. So first of all, he's, just, he's telling it's a warning. He's saying, be careful in what you're judging. Because the way that you judge is the same way that it's going to come back on you. So you always have to be careful, you know, in the same illustration I was using. Now, if I was just some drunk, right, and I go out and, 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 I, and I'm just getting drunk, and then I'm telling someone else not to get drunk, I better be careful with my judgment there because... I'm guilty of the same thing. See, that's hypocrisy. That would be me just saying, I'm doing the exact same thing you're doing, but I'm just going to tell you that you shouldn't be doing it. And this is exactly what this verse is talking about. Let's keep reading here. It says, And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Oh, how, or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Look at verse number five. Thou hypocrite. This is what it's warning us. It's warning about hypocrisy. Now, hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. So what he's saying here is like, a moat is, you know, this is a little bit older language, but a moat is basically it's just some little small piece. So your brother's got something in his eye. Some little eyelash or some little speck, some little piece of dirt or whatever. And he's comparing it with the, with the guy that's trying to help him get that little thing out of his life, get that little, that little thing that's causing pain. He's got a beam stick out of his eye, right? He's got this big overwhelming problem and he's trying to help with the smallest problem that someone else has. So he's like, look, look, first take care of that big problem in your life before you go try to help other people out. And now, and when you think about it too, now this judging that they're doing, like someone has a problem, like the guy that has a moat in his eye, that's a problem. I mean, whenever you get something right, you think about it, it's irritating, it's annoying, it can be painful, it hurts. I mean, you might, your first reaction might not be to let someone else start, start messing with your eye, right? But ultimately, if someone can help you and actually get that out, you'd be thankful, right? I mean, in the end, you, you don't want that problem there. You want it just to be gone. Now, 
You don't want somebody trying to help you that can't see clearly themselves, right? You say, last thing he was, don't be messing with my eye unless I know, hey, you better have a steady hand and you better be able to see just fine. I don't want some big beam coming out of your eye when you're trying to help me get this little speck of dust out of my eye. And, um, and this is exactly what we're saying. So, you know, if someone's got some little sin, some smaller thing, some other problem in their life, you know, you shouldn't be, if you've got big, you know, major problems with sin and you have of your own, you're the last person that should be judging and trying to help them and just pointing out their sin. Take care of the problem that you have yourself first. But notice this too, because in verse number four, it says, um, or I'm sorry, verse number five, when it says, thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thy, uh, thine own eye, then does it say, and then just don't help your brother out at all and don't, don't help him with that moat? No, it says, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. So he's not saying, don't ever try to help someone with that, with that moat in their eye. He's saying, look, first take care of yourself and the big problems that you have, then you could go and help the other person out. See, it's not a hypocritical judgment for someone who is, and I'll, again, I'll just go back, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to pick on alcoholism or whatever, it's just an easy example to use. And you can apply this to any sin, whatever it may be. I'm gonna continue using this one without us. So I'm not a drunk, okay? I have, in the past, you know, I've, I've had that sin, but it's been like quite a long time, over a decade since I've even touched a drop of alcohol. If I'm gonna point out to somebody and I'm going to show them the word of truth, and I'm going to love them to go and just be like, hey, you know, you, you shouldn't be doing that. Like the Bible says, you know, and, and again, you, you could use tact, right? You don't have to just be like, oh, man, you're a wicked sinner, and you ought to, you know, like just go at it that way. There's no reason to do that at all. The Bible doesn't teach doing that. You know, you, teach, you, you, you can speak the truth in love and just try to show people because ultimately what, you know, if I was to tell that to someone, I'm trying to help them. The goal is to say, hey, look, Maybe you don't even realize that this is actually a sin. Maybe you don't understand that. I'm going to show you. Look, God said this, you know, and then just try to show him and prove it. Now, if I'm not guilty of that sin and I'm trying to help him out, that's not me being a hypocrite at all. Now, what people try to do is they'll try to take this and say, well, you're a sinner too. Well, yeah, we're all sinners. And then you would just be saying that like, well, you're a hypocrite for, for trying to tell someone else that has a sin, you know, not to do that. It's like, well, no. That's not what they're saying at all, because then it's like, then he'd be saying, well, don't ever say anything to anybody to try to help him out, you know, in, in his story about the mode and the beam. Like, he wouldn't even have that verse in there that says, then shalt thou see clearly to cast the mode out of thy brother's eye. You can't just apply it broadly across the board, because ultimately then, then we'd all just be hypocrites. And to some degree, we are. I mean, yeah, if, I, if I'm going to say or say, well... I believe the Bible is the word of God and I believe it's the, tr it's the truth and that we ought to obey every single commandment and then I fall short of that but I'm still going to preach it. Okay, in that regard, yes, I'm a hypocrite. But you know what? Everybody is because everybody's a sinner. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to say that I'm going to back off. I'm preaching what the truth is. I mean, hey, this is God's word. But the problem we have today, again, is it's this whole, this, this mentality because people don't want to hear it is the biggest problem is that People don't want to hear is because it affects them personally. And, and I'll tell you what, when I've heard some things out of the Bible that were sins that maybe I like to do, it doesn't always feel that good. <laughs> you be thinking like, oh man, and, and, you, and you want to justify your sin. And this is, this is common for everybody. You want to justify your sin. You don't want to admit that it really is a problem or that it really is wrong or that you're doing something wrong. Nobody wants to be guilty or or. or be doing wrong by God. It's just, it's just, it's just not something that's pleasant. That's something we want to recognize. But we ought to. We ought to recognize it and just say, okay, well, if that's what the Bible says, you know, humble ourselves and accept the truth for what it is. But the 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 wrong reaction to have would just be this this um, this stiff neck neckedness that we're like, you're gonna say, oh, don't even talk to me about that. Oh, don't judge. You shouldn't even be judging me. And the funny thing is, is that the people that say, you know, like, don't judge me, well. Even in saying that, they're judging you. Like, they're saying, like just, just in that statement alone, saying like, you shouldn't be judging me. Why are you judging me and saying I shouldn't be judging you? You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's, it's just kind of ironic the way that works. And, um, but anyways, the, you know, the biggest problem with a lot of these doctrines is just people in general not reading the Bible completely. And, and a lot of this would stop dead in its tracks for one if people knew the Bible for themselves. And for two, if people didn't just repeat things that they hear and just things that they see, 
you know, you, you hear these one-liners and people are real quick to just, just repeat, 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 and without even thinking about it, the things that they just hear. And with this, this judge not, I mean, people stop after verse number one without even deciding to try to read it. And let's just see what this is saying. Roman, turn to Romans 14, if you would, please, because this is another place where people will use. And, and what we're going to do, what I'm going to do today is try to go to these places that are going to tell us not to judge so that we can understand what are we not supposed to judge. And then I'm going to go to places that are tell us to, to, to judge because just to destroy the notion that we should never, ever ju judge anything. I mean, there's a whole book in the Bible that's called the book of Judges, right? And if nobody's ever supposed to judge, then maybe we should tell that to all the judges that are, that are you know, in all the, the courtrooms in America and just say, hey, you're not supposed to judge. Sound like a good idea? Let's just, let's just you know, there's, there, hey, you're judging somebody. What are you doing? No, that's obviously ridiculous. It's a ridiculous concept. We can judge, and we need to judge righteous judgment. But look at Romans 14, because here's another couple of verses that people will use um, to say that we shouldn't judge. But again, just as in Matthew 7, the whole point was, okay, look, take care of your own problems first, and don't be a hypocrite when you judge someone else. That's what it's saying. It's not saying don't ever say anything and don't ever try to help people, don't ever judge in general. It's saying don't be a hypocrite when you judge. Don't, don't um, you know, deal with the big problems you have first before you try to help other people out with their, with their problems that are a lot less severe than your own. Romans 14, look at verse number 10. It says, But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set it not thy brother, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And then in verse 13, it says, Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. Now, so this is another verse people say, Well, see, see, look, let us not therefore judge one another anymore. And that's what they'll say, and they'll just stop at that. But again, it's important to get the context of the, context of the entire chapter to see what this is talking about. Because actually, this entire chapter is talking about um, it's talking about judging weak Christians, and this is talking about concerning meats and holy days, and you know some people observe some. We'll read a little bit of it just so just so you can see it for yourself, because I don't want you just to take my word for it. Let's look at um, look at verse number one. It says, "Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations." So this is talking about someone who's weak in the faith. They're saved, but they're kind of weak. They don't really know a lot of doctrine. They don't really know a whole lot about the Bible. Verse number two, for one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. So in this story, okay, one person saying, hey, I can eat whatever. I have no restrictions on my diet on what I can eat. Then it says another person who is weak eateth herbs. So this is, they're just strictly a vegetarian. Now, who would be right in this scenario? Not that anyone's necessarily wrong, but hey, the person that's eating all things, there's nothing wrong with that because the person who's weak is the one who's saying, you know, like they're just eating herbs. Now, I'm not saying there's a problem with being a vegetarian. Go ahead and be a vegetarian. But the problem is when you judge someone else and say, well, you shouldn't be eating meat. You know, and this is kind of, I think, more in context of like biblical laws and stuff. But either way, you're saying like, you know, it's judging someone and saying, well, you shouldn't be doing this and they're wrong. And it's just that they just don't understand the scripture. Because there's plenty of scripture, you know, in the, in the Mosaic Law, there were dietary restrictions that people had to follow. The Jews had to follow certain dietary restrictions. There were certain animals they were allowed to eat, and there were certain animals they were not allowed to eat. And they had all these rules in place. But when the time of Reformation came, when Jesus Christ came, he did away with those carnal ordinances. And um, I'm not going to preach all sorry about that, but basically it's done away with. Okay, and in verse number... Two, it's saying here that, you know, one believeth that he can eat all things, another is weak, he eateth herbs. And then it says in verse 3, Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. So it's saying, look, if someone decides they're just going to be a vegetarian, fine. It's no big deal. I mean, they're not sinning. There's no law that they're breaking by choosing to only eat vegetables or herbs or whatever. Like, okay. And then on the flip side... Don't judge the other way. Don't, hey, this person's eating meat. This person's eating, you know, animal flesh, you know, beef, whatever. 
Don't judge that person. Because, there, again, there's no law, there's no ordinances against that stuff. Let it be. You know, these are, these are things that are, they're just, they're ultimately, it's not a big deal. It's not a sin. There's, there's no reason to be, say, to be judging people in these instances because it doesn't really matter. And this is what this whole chapter is talking about. And again, then it goes on to, to regarding days. It says in verse 4, Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or followeth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. So basically he's saying, look, some people might say, I don't want to work on Saturday. Right? I, mean, I just want, I want to use Saturday as a day of rest. I want to use Saturday to just, you know, meditate on God and do these things. And other people, they think, you know what, I need to work on Saturday. And that's what I need to do. Fine. Either way, it doesn't matter. Some people do the same thing with Sunday. They say, you know what, Sunday, we got church. I'm going to dedicate the entire day to God. And that's what I'm going to do. Great. No problems with that. Other people are going to say, well, and, but here's the thing, like, I still think we should go to church because the Bible says not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. So when, you know, when we do have assembly, you shouldn't forsake that. But it doesn't mean you have to dedicate the entire day and just not do anything else but church stuff. I mean, there's, there's not a sin, you know, there's no law against that. The Bible does say we shouldn't forsake the assembling, that we should go to church. That is one of the commandments, but, you know, it's not, it's not, um, you know, it doesn't mean you have to, to wipe out the entire day and just not do anything. The Bible doesn't teach that. So again, it's one of those instances, just like eating food. Hey, you do that, I'm doing this, no big deal, no problem. Those, that's the instances it's talking about here when we, when we go down a few more verses here, when we see in verse number 10, you know, but why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And, um, you know, it, it's con a continuation of this judging people over things that mean that are meaningless. Like, I mean, it, it doesn't matter one way or the other. So, again, this is that context. We understand the context. First of all, Matthew 7, don't judge when you're going to be a hypocrite about it. When you're doing the same thing or when you have even larger sins to take care of than what someone else has. Two, don't be judging things over stupid things that don't mean anything. That, that's just, it's meaningless, it has nothing to do with the laws, nothing to do with, with sinning or, or doing right or wrong. Don't make up your own man-made rules about things and just say, well, everyone's got to follow it this way, everyone's got to do it this way. That's, that, that, that's what we're not supposed to be judging in that sense. Let's look at one more place here in 1 Corinthians chapter number 4. This one's a little, honest, I'll be honest with you, this one's a little bit more difficult to understand, but 1 Corinthians chapter 4, I don't think it's too bad. These are the, the three main places. Well, there's one, there's one other place. There's four main places I found that tell us not to judge. Now, it doesn't mean it tells us not to judge in general and never, ever judge anything, but that's why we're getting the context of this stuff. So we understand, hey, when should we be judging? When should we not be judging? Don't judge when we're a hypocrite. And don't judge over things that are just completely meaningless that doesn't really matter. Look at... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter number 4. We're going to start in verse number 1. It says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. For I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes that you might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. 
For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what is thou that thou didst not receive? Now, if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? Now, in 1 Corinthians 4, Paul's referring to himself being judged by them. In verse number 3, it says, But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. And this is something that he had to deal with with the church at Corinth, with the Corinthians. He kind of handles this in actually 1 and 2 Corinthians, where they, they, they talk about him. They'll say, like, oh, yeah, he's real mighty in, in words, you know, like, like when he's writing letters to us. But then they're saying, but when he's, when he's actually here, you know, it's going to be a different story. And, he's, and he has to respond to that. He's like, look, the same way that I am when I'm writing my letters to you, I'm going to be in presence. You know, he has the power of God. I mean, this is, you know, he's not just, just full of hot air and, you know, hiding behind a pen and paper. You know, he's, he's preaching the word of God. And see, a lot of people were doubting him and kind of doubting his authority from God. And just, he was dealing with a lot of stuff there. And... You know, basically he's saying it's a very small thing that I should be judge of you. It doesn't really matter to him. It says when he tells them to judge nothing before the time, because that's what he says in verse number five. He says, therefore judge nothing before the time. He's basically saying that, you know, he's a steward of the mysteries of God. God has revealed some things to Paul. I mean, he, he penned down, all, you know, all the epistles of Paul in the New Testament. He was used, he was given mysteries of God that had not yet been revealed yet. You know, he, had, he was given this, you know, the word of truth from God. The Holy Ghost used him to, to reveal unto us God's word in, in his epistles. And um, so that's why he's a steward of the mysteries of God. And since he's a steward, you know, um, that's why he says in verse 4, he says, you, you know, in verse 3 he says, a very small thing I should be judged of you. And then in verse 4 he says, for I know nothing by myself. So because of this, he's saying, look, he judges not his own self, in verse 3, because I know nothing by myself. He's saying God has given it to him. It's not like he came up with this stuff on his own. He was given it to him. God, it's not like he just came up with this stuff out of his own mind, but it was given to him. And he's saying, therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. We both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. And I think what he's telling them here is not to judge before the time because God's going to bring to light these hidden things of darkness. They're going to understand it soon enough. God's going to bring it to light and he's going to make the hearts manifest too. So they're going to understand. Ultimately, one day they're going to know Paul's heart and they're going to understand that the things that he's preaching to them was truth and they're going to be brought to light. And see, he's dealing with these. The Corinthians were a car, like carnal Christians. And he says that earlier in the book, that, that they were carnal, you know, they were having these, these strifes and divisions, and they were, people were saying, well, I'm of Paul and I'm of Apollos, and they were kind of like picking these people that they were going to follow, and instead of just like following God's word, regardless of, of the preacher or the man who's bringing it to them, just saying, look, but they, but they were kind of carnal, they were just fleshly, they were, they were just kind of clinging to one person and kind of making these, these, these sects. These sections and just and just um, a lot of problems in this church, but um, we finish this. He finishes this in the, in the section that we read with an admonition not to be puffed up, which is going to be the same exact theme of the next reference that we see in not judging. See, um, in verse number, because he is, he was just got done saying, "Look, I don't know anything of myself. This isn't something I came up with on my own." And he's saying, so don't judge anything before the time. God's going to reveal it, basically. And then verse 6, he says, And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that none of you be puffed up for one against another. So he's saying, don't, you know, not to have this prideful attitude where... And, and basically, I think what he's saying here is, look, a lot of times when people have a really good pastor, a really good preacher, a really good teacher... And they're learning a lot from him. I mean, Paul would be a great teacher to listen to, wouldn't he? I mean, wouldn't you love to just sit and just like hear the things that Paul had to say and expounding the Bible and just and just and just preaching truth? Or like Peter or James or John or like these, you know, these great men of the Bible that were just that had the power of God. Man, I would love to be sitting under that. But what happens is a lot of times when people hear that, they get puffed up against maybe someone else you know like maybe there's someone who's who's in peter's church and peter's a pastor and he's preaching 
And then there's someone else who's been listening to Paul. And then, you know, I just want to say, well, well, Paul said this. And Paul, you know, I'm just kind of having this, this haughty, this puffed up attitude. And, um, and, you know, just causing more strife than anything else when they're both preachers of God. They're both preaching the truth. And, um, you know, not to get, to get caught up in like a cult of personality or in, or in one man. Because Paul's even saying, look, it's not like I came up with this on my own. Okay, this was just given to me from God, so there's no reason to just like elevate him above where he should be as a man. And in James chapter 4, go ahead and turn there. This is the last place where, where it has references where, not, you know, where he's saying not to judge. James is right near the end of the Bible. It's right after the book of Hebrews. James chapter 4. It says in verse number 10 of James chapter 4, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. So again, we're starting off right away with, with being humble, which is the exact opposite of being puffed up or prideful. James 4.10, Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judgest another? So again, this is, this is the last place where it's basically people will go and turn to say, well, look, well, who are you that judges another? And they like to use that question. They like to use that one statement. Well, well who do you think you are? Right? But again, we got to look at the context of what he's saying here. First of all, should we be speaking evil of our brother? No, of course not. That's a sin. I mean, we shouldn't be speaking evil of your brother in Christ. It's not something that anybody should be doing at all. This is saying that a person that judges his brother by speaking evil of him is actually speaking evil of the law and thereby judging the law. So in verse number 11, we'll read that again. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. So he's saying, look, if you're speaking evil of your brother, you're basically you're judging the law. And this is directly related to verse number 10, which is saying to humble yourselves. See, many people have this holier-than-thou attitude where they're lifted up with pride and they think that you know, they're so perfect and they end up basically just judging their brethren and speaking evil of them because they just think that they're so flawless and so good that they're just going to be bad-mouthing and, and talking bad about other people and just speaking evil of their brethren. See, when you speak evil of your brethren too, that's not talking about like, you're not, you know, it, it's not something where you're going and directly talking to someone. When you're speaking evil of them, that means you're talking to someone else about them. And this is exactly what saying not to do. So I shouldn't be going around and being like, being like, hey Sebastian, you know that, that Chad guy, you know what he's been doing? He's been going out, he's been getting in all this trouble. I just, you know, I just saw, I just saw him leave the bar the other day. That's not something I should, I should be speaking evil of, of my brother to someone else. That, that's not edifying for anybody. That's, that's actually, I mean, that's, that's a big sin. That's something that we shouldn't be doing is going around and talking about other people. This is not the attitude that we should be having. So I'd be like judging my brother and speaking evil of him to somebody else. Whereas if there really is a problem, what you ought to do is just confront that person. And you, you, know, and, you and them can deal with that by themselves. You know, I just go to, go to Chad and just be like, look, man, I saw you leaving that bar. Why are you going? Why are you doing that? You know? <laughs> but, uh, you know, and this is, you know, when we read this stuff in context, you get the proper understanding of what this is saying. Of course we shouldn't be doing that. You know, who art thou that judges another when he just tells you all this stuff about speaking evil about your brother and judging the law when you're speaking evil of him, saying, you know, because you, you're, you're having no respect for the law then. And here's a perfect example of what this is saying here. It's in Luke chapter 18. I can read this for you. You don't have to turn there. Luke 18 is a perfect example of what this is talking about. Verse number 10 of Luke 18 says, Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. 
I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes on the heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So here you see the Pharisee. I love how it says he prayed thus with himself. I mean, he's not even like praying to God. He's just like, he's praying with himself. God, I thank you. Know, I thank you that I'm, I'm not some sinner like everyone else. I thank you that I'm so great. I'm so holy. I fast so much. I give you tithes of everything. And aren't I just wonderful, God? You know, I thank you for that I'm so wonderful. That's basically what this guy is saying. And he's saying, I'm not like this, you know, this publican over here. Where he's just judging this guy. You know, just, just standing there in, in, in pride of his, own, of his own righteousness or his supposed righteousness. And he's judging this publican that's standing next to him. And, he's, and Jesus is saying, look, the publican was, was humble. He wouldn't even lift up his eyes to God and just said, look, Lord, be merciful to me. I'm a sinner. And Jesus is saying, that publican went away justified. God heard his prayer. God received that, and, and he's justified. This other proud, arrogant, self-righteous man, he's not justified. And this is what this is saying, you know, about, about judging other people. That is not the way that you do it. Absolutely that's not. So if, if I'm going to say, you know, I'm not going to say that we're, it's always okay to judge because it's not. But I'm also not going to say that it's never okay to judge because now we're going to look at some of these other references that are going to tell us when we should judge. Okay, now keep those examples in mind that we just saw when we look at the next verses. And this is why it's so important to read the entire Bible and be careful of those that are going to try to take verses out of context and not include the other ones. And this is why it's so important to just understand because... I'm sure everybody here has heard people say, don't judge, judge not. I mean, it's so common today. I mean, you hear it all the time. Look at John chapter number seven. Look at John chapter number seven. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. This is the first place we're going to look at where the Bible actually is going to tell us that we should judge. Okay, John chapter number seven, verse 21, the Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Verse 22. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me, because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So he didn't just say, hey, don't judge. He said, judge not according to the appearance, just the outward appearance. Don't just judge based on that. Don't, you know, don't judge a book on its cover, as uh, that old adage goes. He said, look, don't judge according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So if you're going to judge, make sure it's a righteous judgment. And what these people were doing, what they're accusing him of is saying, oh, you're breaking the Sabbath day because you're healing on the Sabbath. That was their big thing. You know, the Sabbath day was established in the Mosaic Law. A man was not supposed to do any work. They were supposed to have all the food, everything else prepared. They were supposed to use it completely as a day of rest. And that was part of the law. But what he's pointing out here, he's pointing out their hypocrisy and saying, look, first of all, you know, Moses gave you the law of circumcision. So eight days after a male child is born, they were to be circumcised. And guess what? Sometimes that happened on a Sabbath day. And he was saying, look, you don't want to break that law. So one thing you will do on the Sabbath is you'll circumcise. You'll do that. So he's saying, look, circumcision, you're taking you know, some flesh away from a child. And he's saying, I'm making someone just whole. I'm making them better. I'm like, I'm you know, they're, 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 they're being complete. And he's saying, you're going to judge me. You're going to be angry at me because I've made someone whole on the Sabbath day when you will, will you know, take away from someone by, by keeping the law of circumcision. And that's what he's saying. Look, make it a righteous judgment. Understand what's going on here. Like he's not doing work. He's just helping someone out. In another place, he's saying, look, if one of you has an ox or an ass and they fall into a ditch, you know, you're not just going to leave them there. You're going to, you know, even if it's a Sabbath day, you're going to like bring them out. You know, you're going to help them. 
And he's saying, you have to understand what the law is even about and why it's there. And, and understand the spirit of law. And that's how you judge righteous judgment. So we're supposed to judge righteously. Don't just judge based on the appearance, but judge righteously. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. It's another place that's telling us where, we, where we're allowed to judge and where we should be judging. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, and 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We're going to start reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. So here we see and look. First of all, he's saying, you know, know ye not that we shall judge angels? Like, we're going to be in position of, of, of power, you know, in the millennial reign, and we're going to be actually judging angels. And he said, how much more are things that pertain to this life? Like, if we're going to be judging angels, then, then how is it that you can't judge the small things, the little things that happen in this life? And he said, do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? I mean, the, saint, the saved people, the saints of, this, of, this, of all time, basically, are going to be people who are going to be judging the world. And if the world be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest things? He said, look, you can't even judge the smallest things. And what he's saying here is rebuking them because, for one, he's got people going to law before the heathen. So, like, if we have a problem in this church, stop it right now. Put that down. If we have a problem in this church, you know, if, if someone does you wrong, the Bible's saying, first of all, the church ought to judge, like, you, first of all, you ought to go and just settle between yourselves. If something happens, let's say, you know, um, I'm backing out and, and, I, and I crash into Sebastian's vehicle. You know, what we ought to do is just deal with it ourselves, okay? But let's say, you know, I'm just, I'm kind of a jerk about it, right? And I'm just not accepting my responsibility for what I did. The wrong response would be for him just to sue me. And, and, and take me to court before the unbelievers. The next step is going to be take it to the church. Okay, you take it to the people and say, look, this is what happened. And within the church, we ought to be able to judge between these small matters. We ought to be able to judge and say, okay, well, look, what happened? Get the facts, you know, see what's going on. And just say, okay, well, look, Pastor Burson's, you know, you, you were wrong. You need, you, need to, you need to take care of this. And then it would be up to me to, to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to accept the judgment from the church and go on. You know, it would be wickedness or sin to just, to just be like, nope, and just be stiff-necked and just say, you know, and go to law before the believers or whatever. But he's saying, look, you have that, that ability to judge. You can totally judge in these small things, and that's the way it ought to be handled in church. Now, obviously, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not like that. I'm not going to be like that or whatever and cause some big problems. I'm a perfect driver. I'll never, ever back in your no, <laughs> But But if I do, you know, obviously, it'll be taken care of. But it, basically, what he's saying is, look, you have problems, you have problems with people in church, go to them directly. If that doesn't work, hey, let it be a church matter. You can handle these things. And you ought to be able to handle them. Because, I mean, for one, I would much rather have somebody who's a godly person, who knows the Bible well, who, who loves God, who's serving God, to be, a, to be a, a judge. Because they're a lot more likely to be a fair and righteous judge and just, and just try to deal with it you know, righteously, than someone who doesn't know God, someone who doesn't know the Bible, just trust their judgment over things. I mean, people who know the Bible and know God, they're going to be a lot more likely to be a good judge as it is. That's who we should be going to for, you know, for judging these matters and judging these small matters. I'd, ra I'd much rather do that. And he's even saying, you know, we should not be going before the unbel unbelievers and not be taking brother to law against another. Um, we're in 1 Corinthians 6. Turn back to chapter number 2. We're almost done here. I just got, I got this. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and then Acts 17 are the last two places we're going to turn to about judging. 
And we're going to see why we're even able to judge, which is, I was just kind of leading into it with that last story. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, look at verse number 13. The Bible says, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now verse 14, what that's saying there is basically, look, when people aren't saved, they can't understand the Bible. They're not going to understand spiritual things because it's the Holy Spirit of God that teaches us and that's what we need to help to get our understanding. The natural man doesn't receive it. He thinks it's foolishness. They're just going to think that the Bible is foolish. They don't understand it. They have nothing to do with it. In verse 15 it says, But he that is spiritual judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that, we may, that he may instruct him? but we have the mind of Christ. Now, he that is spiritual is capable and even able of judging all things. We're able to do that because we have the mind of Christ. Who is the perfect judge? Jesus Christ, right? God is the perfect judge. Well, we have his mind right here. The words of the Bible, we have the mind of Christ. We understand. So we can use these words. We can use what he has for us in order to make a righteous judgment. See, if it was just my own opinion or if it was even just some man-made law, how do you even know that that's righteous? <clears throat> but when you have the mind of Christ, when you have the mind of God in front of you, you can use this to base your judgments off of. And that's why if you're a spiritual person, you know, spiritual and knowing God, knowing the Bible, knowing these things, then you can judge all things because you have the truth and you're basing, you know, you ought to be basing the truth on your, you know, to, to guide and, and to develop your judgments on things. That's why we're even able to do this. Now, the last place, look at Acts chapter 17. It's the last place I'm going to have you turn. We're almost done. Acts chapter 17. And this is what I was kind of getting at at the very beginning of the sermon. Acts chapter 17. Look at verse number 10. The Bible says... Um, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women which were Greeks, and of men not a few. Now, He's saying here that the people of Berea, they were more noble than the people that were living in Thessalonica. And the reason why they were more noble is because they were able to receive the word that Paul was preaching with all readiness of mind. It means they were all ready to hear it. They were, they were ready to hear what he had to say. And they searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So Paul would preach unto them at Berea. They'd hear what he had to say. And then what they would do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check him out on that. I'm going to look up. Is that, exa is that really what he's saying? Is, is what he's saying true? Hey, I'm going to search the scriptures daily. Every, I'm hearing this stuff. I hear what he's saying. I understand what he's saying. But I'm going to check him on that. Oh, I looked that up. This is the judgment that we all need to have, especially, especially when it comes to spiritual matters, especially when it comes to things that you hear about the Bible, especially when it comes to things that are preached. I can't stress this enough. I hope that everybody here on the sound of my voice will read the Bible for themselves and know for themselves and be able to judge when someone comes to you and says something like, oh, judge not, you're not supposed to judge. That you automatically should be able to say, you know what? Why not? Even just question it. Hey, what I'm preaching tonight, question it. Question what I'm saying. Don't just blindly receive what a pastor's saying, what a preacher's saying, what someone else is saying because you think that they know the Bible really well because how do you know if they're out to deceive you? There's lots of deceivers out there. And I could say all day until I'm blue in the face, hey, I'm not here to deceive you, but how are you going to know that for yourself? How you know that? I mean, look, I'm not here trying to deceive you, but again, I can say that it doesn't mean anything unless you know for yourself. And that's why I was, you know, everybody, this is, we all have that responsibility not to be, to be led astray by knowing it for yourself. And, and take it in, you know, there's nothing wrong with learning from people. I'm not saying don't take what I say and just, and just think, well, well, he's just a man, I'm just not going to listen to anything he has to say. No, 
Take what I have to say, compare it to the truth of the Bible, and say, well, is what he's saying matching up with what the Scripture says? Does that make sense? Is this, is this saying, or did he say something that says, you know what, no, the Bible actually says, you know, something completely different. And that's how you're going to know the truth. And this is, this is the way that we all need to be judges. You have to judge yourself. You have to hear, take what I'm saying, take what anybody's saying. But in order to do that, it's, I mean, it's not necessarily easy because you're going to have to know the Bible for yourself. Otherwise, it's easier to be deceived. We all, we, and and that, that responsibility falls on each and every one of us. And, and you know, I'm here. I want to push you. I want you to strive to learn the Bible, to know it. That's why we do the memory verses. I want you to be able to keep the word in your heart and have it with you all the time so that you won't be deceived when people come at you with false doctrine and people try to teach you things that are incorrect. Look, every word of God is pure and true, and every word of God is important. They're, it's all important. None of this stuff... It's, it's easy to kind of blow things up and say, hey, well, that's just not very important. But if it's, if it's a doctrine and if it's something that, like, the Bible's talking about, then it is. And if it's something about just, you know, being a vegetarian versus not, whatever, it's not a big deal. But when we're talking about doctrine and people trying to tell you stuff, and usually, you know, the thing is with the judge and the thing that really, that really burns me up is that people are saying that it's just because they know that they're in sin and they don't want to hear about it. That's the reason. That's why they're doing it. That's why they're just going to tell you, they oh, judge not. And, they, and what they do is they're going to try to boldly confront a Christian who's just trying to do and say what's right. You know, people are just oftentimes just trying to do things and just be like, look, you know, this is wrong. This is what the Bible says. And just, and just try to explain that. And they just want to shut up the Christian and just say, like, well, I'm going to use the Bible against you and just say, oh, well, see, the Bible says judge not. And if you don't know what else the Bible says, then you, that, could, that could cause you just to be like, oh, well, okay, yeah, maybe I shouldn't judge. Instead of at least looking it up. I mean, the wise thing to do is if, if you don't know it and someone comes at you with something, okay, you don't have to answer. You don't have to answer right away, but then go back home and look it up. This happened to me. I mean, it, it happens a lot less often now just based on, on my own knowledge and, and reading and just learning more and more about the Bible. When I would go out soul winning, I'd go out talking to people and people would bring up something and just be like, well, hey, the Bible says this. And if I didn't know anything about it, you know, I'm not just going to pretend to know something about it. Okay, well, I'm going to need to look that up later. Now, I might know that what they're saying isn't right, but I wasn't able to really, you know, to support my argument or be like, well, no, this is why the Bible says this, this, and this. And I would have to go home and study and, and look it up and, and look it up for myself. And I wouldn't just accept because someone else said that to me. I don't just accept that. I would go up and look it up for myself and see, well, does the Bible, you know, is what he's saying actually true? Is it legitimate? Is what, you know, what this person's coming at me with saying why I'm wrong? Because, again, we all ought to be able to at least be humble enough to say, well, maybe I'm not right about everything. And if someone's saying something, you know, if you don't know the answer, if you haven't already learned it for yourself from the Bible, if it's something that you're not sure of, okay, we'll give it a chance. Let's see. And, and, you know, it's, it's the, the quest and knowledge just for the truth and just want to understand and just be right with what the Bible says. But don't let people trick you and, and, and especially don't be lazy in just accepting what someone says without looking up for yourself because that's dangerous. You know, hopefully if, if you're doing that, I mean, hopefully you got someone who's, who's preaching the truth, but if they're not, I mean, you're never going to know about it. But um, let's bow our example word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for the Bible. And um, it's really, it's not even that difficult to read, dear Lord. We, we just have to make it a part of our life and just set a schedule for ourselves where we say, you know what? I don't want to be deceived by anybody. I'm going to read the Bible. And when things, when people say things, I'm going to, I'm not just going to blindly accept them no matter who's saying them, but I'm going to, I'm going to look it up for myself. I'm going to see what you have to say about it, God, because ultimately you're our source for truth and you're, you're the final authority in, in everything that we do here and, and for all of our beliefs, Lord. And, um, and I, we thank you for, for providing your word to us and just preserving it for us so that we can have something to go back to and just rely on and completely trust, dear Lord. We thank you so much for that. I pray that um, You'd help us just have a better understanding of when we should be judging and when we should not be judging. Dear Lord, help us not to be hypocrites. Help us not to be backbiters and to, and to just be speaking evil of our brethren. Dear Lord, help us to, to judge righteously. And um, dear God, we love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.